About three years ago, I came in the Big Think and I talked very strongly and very passionately about um, atheism. I did not believe in God. And uh, over the past three years, um, I opened my heart to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit filled me. And uh, all of a sudden, I realized that everlasting life is possible by following in the ways of um, Jesus Christ, our Lord. I have since then dedicated my life to Jesus Christ. I have, uh, I have joined the church and I uh, will uh, live the rest of my life and die as a Christian in, um, in service and in joy with Jesus Christ our Lord. I'm just fucking with you. I had you for a minute, just for a minute that I, just for a second that I had to go in, just for a minute. Can you imagine how much money I would make if I could just convert to real, I don't have to convert. If I just pretend to convert to real, can you imagine if I just took and threw away my atheism, if I threw away my morality and said I was, I was religious and went out and started preaching? Can you imagine the amount of money I would make? But what good if a man gain the whole world but lose his soul? No, I'm still an atheist. I'm still doing fine. I just spoke at a um, Young Americans for Liberty conference, you know, a lot of conservatives, a lot of people that are too young to be wearing suits, wearing suits. Um, I liked him. And afterwards, a man came up to me, probably 20 years old, and he was slight in build, uh, very dark complected. Um, and he said to me, um, I want to talk about this during your lecture but I was very, very frightened that there were cameras there. And I said, well, there were cameras there, so at least you're not frightened by UFOs, you're frightened by spiders, something that's real. I can respect that. I made this kind of light of his, uh, his wording there. And then he shut me up, because then he said, my family is from Pakistan. And everybody in my community is a devout Muslim. And my mom and dad are devout, devout Muslim. And I'm an atheist. And if I said that while you were speaking, if I raised my hand and said that with the cameras on, said that declarative statement, I'm an atheist. My mom and dad would not kill me but they would disown me and they would never speak to me again. And I would be an apostate and it is not unlikely that someone in my community would kill me. And he didn't mean that figuratively. He didn't mean that word, kill, uh, like comedians mean it. He meant they would take his life away. Now I know Iyan Hirsi Ali, so I knew he wasn't bluffing. And then it got worse, because then he said, and yet with my dark skin and my straight black hair, The other side considers me Muslim and wants to get me out of the country and treat me badly. And I hear Trump giving his speeches against people of my ancestry. And I realize that there's nobody for me, nobody. And he said, I wanted to talk to you because, and this is him saying this, he said some stuff about me being some, you know, the only one who would understand, which is clearly not, not true. Everybody understands. Virtually everybody understands. But you know, as an atheist, Christopher Hitchens, my friend, my hero, my mentor, even though he wasn't much older than me, but he's so much smarter, uh, used to say, you know, Penn, if you dislike Christianity, you must dislike Islam much more. 
Now, I want to be very careful about this. Islamophobia is the wrong word. Islam is an idea. Muslims are a people. You are allowed to hate ideas. You're allowed to disagree with ideas. You are not allowed to hate people for their ideas. It's the wrong word. It's just the wrong word. We have to be more careful. Um, Islamophobia is not racism. Saying anything against Muslims is. You can say Christianity is wrong and have friends who are Christian. You can show full respect for Christians. You're not, you're, you're not christianity phobic. You know, you're just saying, no, I have a different idea. That's what America is. And I believe my feelings as an atheist change somewhat when that man speaks to me. Because because of my heart, yes, Islam is wrong. Yes, Christianity is wrong. Yes, Judaism is wrong. I believe that like I believe I breathe. I don't doubt that ever. But right now, Muslims, those who believe in Islam, really need our help. There's refugees who are suffering in a way that history will not be kind to us for ignoring that. We must love them, we must embrace them, we must help them. Even if they believe things that we know are wrong. The chances of a terrorist believing in Islam are pretty good. The chances of someone who believes in Islam being a terrorist are very, very bad. Very little chance of that. We took into Nevada, I live in Nevada, we took nine people from Syria in the entire state of Nevada. That's how many we welcomed. Nine. The number of fingers Jerry Garcia had, nine. Nine, actually, if it's gonna be Jerry Garcia, I think it's nine. Nine? No, it's this hand, nine. Jerry Garcia is not important to this discussion, Penn. Get on with it. Nine? No, it wasn't, nine. Jerry Garcia, nine. Jerry, nine. Not nine families. No. Nine people. Nevada. It's a state, you know. We've got to help those people. Now, how do I, as an atheist, say to Muslims, your religion is wrong, your terrorists are crazy, this is dangerous, get over it, and then say, I love you and you're welcome. Really, really hard. I gotta tell you, I know there's no God. And because there's no God, we have to reach out to Muslims. We have to do God's work because God's not going to. And that love and that compassion is not gonna come from Allah. And it's not gonna come from Yetwah. It's not gonna come from Jesus Christ. That love and compassion is gonna come from us. Is it dangerous to embrace Muslims because some of them would be terrorists? Yeah, it's really dangerous. Do we have to protect ourselves? Yeah, we really do. There's hard problems here, really hard problems. And I don't have any of the answers to it. But I'll tell you what the answer isn't. The answer isn't standing up with hair that looks like cotton candy made of piss and saying, you know, we got to keep these people out of here. we got to keep these people out of here. I c cannot find any way that preaching hate helps that situation. And I defy you, no matter how afraid you are of, um, of terrorists, to look at that man. And I'm so glad I don't remember his name. <laughs> I'm so glad I don't remember where he's from. Because in the, in the instant I talk about him, because I'm, I'm such an idiot, I spill everything that's going through my head. I might actually jeopardize his life. But I don't know who he is, so we're safe. I don't know where he's from, so we're safe. Except for Pakistan. Now he's born in the USA. Born in, doesn't matter. Um, how do we do that? How do we help 
How do we help people that have a religion that's wrong, but that aren't going to kill us, to be able to be part of us without, you know, we see in France, we see in Belgium, we see in these places, these, these communities that stay insular. You know, this man who says to me, my community would kill me, these insular communities. Um, we got to get back to the idea of uh, an America that was a melting pot. We have to be able to have that guy that talked to me after my lecture. We got to be able to have him just, you know, be another guy. <laughs> and all of this, this long-winded, uh, uh, passionate craziness that I'm spewing out with no answers, just comes down to we've got to stop judging people by the color of their skin and where they're from. I mean, did we learn that with, with the Irish? <laughs> did we learn that with the Polish? Did we learn that with the Africans? Did we learn that with every single group of people that we spit on and not welcomed? I mean, uh, John Lennon said in a song called New York City with the Elephant's Memory Band, if the man wants to shove us out, we're going to jump and shout, the Statue of Liberty said, come, New York City, such a fucking badass city. Yeah. You know, the United States of America is a fucking badass country. And we are strong, and we are brave, and we are loving, and we've got to stop acting like cowards. We've got to stop acting like in every single cupboard is a Muslim terrorist. Yes. Terrorism is a problem. Yes, we have to protect our families. Yes, the nightmare of these deaths is, is unforgivable and unthinkable. But we have to remember that people are good. If you look at the 7 billion people on this planet, just about 7 billion of them are really good. We can really trust them. Can we please learn something from Las Vegas? Learn something about gambling, right? We know how the odds work. We know the house always wins. In this case, the odds are always on someone being good. If someone walks up to you with dark skin and straight hair, looking like they're from Pakistan or Egypt or even, you know, even Iraq, even Afghanistan, and they're walking towards you, the chances are overwhelming that that person will be good. You're not trying to fill an inside straight. <laughs> your, your chances are way in your advantage that they're good people. So how did my atheism change? Well, there's no God. And there's never a doubt about that, ever. But we have to make sure that when we're screaming that there's no God, we don't scream it so loud that we can't hear someone who is religious crying for help and know that we have to help them.